All right, here's the tie-dye video that I have promised that I would make. Um, this is just going to be acid dye. I'm going to do another video on Procyon dye because this one's a little bit different. The technique's a little bit different for both of them. So I'll do the acid dye one first. And if you haven't heard yet, I've got some dye out on Etsy and you can buy this dye that I'm using. It's called Dye Kit. Um, and it comes with enough to do at least a yard for each of these little containers, um, probably more. Um, I'll show you at the end um, how much I've gotten out of these little jars. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put about two cups of water, half teaspoon of citric acid into a container of warm water and get your fabric really wet. This is an entire yard that I have got in here. And then what you're going to want to do is sort of just sort of twist it up. You can do a spiral. You could just chunk it all in here and be wild and crazy. You could pleat it. You could add some rubber bands. You could tie it. Um, really, there's all kinds of options. And I just kind of like to bunch it up in the bottom of the container like this. This is, this is what I like. Um, and I can show you what this looks like. Literally, I just stuffed it in the bottom of the container. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to use your dye concentrate. Um, and you're going to open it carefully so you don't make a mess. Um, and you're going to take two tablespoons of that into a separate container. Okay. Never put anything in into this always um, keep your dye your dye concentrate so it's not contaminated with um, citric acid because once it gets citric acid in it then it'll stick to everything you won't be able to do solid colors or anything so in this jar you have two tablespoons of dye concentrate and we're gonna put an eighth of a teaspoon of citric acid in here too. I can get it out of the jar. Okay. Eighth of a teaspoon citric acid in there. Give it a stir. And then we're going to add warm water until it gets to be about a cup. It could go a cup. It could go a little more. Um, anyway, so you want about a cup of liquid in here. And you're going to give it a stir. I have found that um, laundry detergent scoops make the best measuring spoons. Cause I have a ton of them and um, they're free because I'm already paying for the for the scoops so all right so then you're gonna take this and you're gonna dump it on top of your fabric in here and I just kind of dump it willy-nilly you can also if you're really particular you can buy um, like uh, ketchup bottles at the dollar store like those squeeze bottles and you could put all this in a squeeze bottle too Okay, so, so this is what it looks like, okay? And then, I probably should have thought this through a little. Right. I'm going to rinse out my jar and just use the same one. All right, so this is also the same dye concentrate. So we're going to put two tablespoons of the purple in here, just like that. Okay, and an eighth of a teaspoon of citric acid, and then we're going to fill this up to be about a cup, or thereabouts, <laughs> and we're going to give it a stir. You can also use your scoop if you want, if you wanted to like be really particular and dump this in certain spots and not others you could do that too you could get a turkey baster you could get a eyedropper i mean really you can just kind of have fun with this i like to just dump it because it's quicker <laughs> okay so we're going to dump this in here and this color is a lot darker than the color i used um okay i'm gonna put this in the sink all right, 
so this is what it looks like. Okay. And you can kind of swish this around a little bit. Um, to make sure you get all the dye um, used up. And you can also, if you're, you know, you're feeling crazy, you can push on this. I would wear gloves first. I don't want to dye my hands turquoise and purple. Um, you can push on this a little bit. You can swish it around a little bit. The more you move it, the more the colors are going to come together and not be a separate. So just keep that in mind. Um, the one thing about tie dye is that you can never reproduce the look. Like once you've done it, you've done it. And chances are you're not going to get the same look twice. It's almost always different. So I'm going to set this aside and show you what this looks like. So this one, and this was not done on white fabric. This was done on like a weird gray fabric that I messed up dyeing. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to over dye it. So I over dyed it. So don't think that your white's not going to be white. This is, this was gray to start with. Okay. So this one, I did not move it around at all. I just kind of left it, you know, as it is. And you can see it's definitely like there are some white spots. This one, I added more water. So instead of the eight ounces, I did probably more like 12 ounces. No, not that one, this one. Um, so it had more water, so it had more flow. So it was able to cover more of the white uh, or the gray, I guess, in this case. Um, and this one turned out really cool. I really, really like it. And you could fussy cut this if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to like put like this somewhere like at the waist or something that would look really cool on a costume and then this one this one I think I did a swirl maybe I don't remember what I did with this one um but again this is the other one that I did um so these three yards of fabric and they're each a yard of fabric um I got three yards of fabric out of half of two of these jars in my dye kit. So I say it will dye a yard of fabric. Well, I mean, two jars would dye two yards of fabric, but it just really depends on how deep the color is, how, um, how much white you have. There's a lot of variables. So if you were gonna dye them like this, then you would get six yards. If you were gonna do a really dark solid color, then you may only get a yard of dye out of each container. But know that you'll probably get more. And if you're gonna dye uh, nylon mesh, then you will get tremendously more out of, uh, out of each little container because you don't need nearly as much to dye um, the mesh because there's just not as much fabric there. So that's, that's what you're, you're aiming for. So I have a few others in here. This one, um, blue and yellow, and I did an accordion fold and I used um, plastic uh, clothespins to clamp it off. And this is just a scrap. This is not anything um, that I'm attached to because I was just doing test swatches. So, <laughs> so these are all, this one's pink and blue. And I, I actually washed this with a bunch of other stuff and so it got a little mottled. Um, so be careful when you wash stuff together. Oh, uh, let's see, what else do I have in here? This one is also pink and blue. Um, so I think, um, like I said, you never know what you're gonna get. You never know how these are gonna turn out until you rinse them out. This one's striped. Um, I like, you can almost always find a face in these. Like right there, that looks like a face to me um, with like horns. <laughs> so, so look for the faces in your tie-dye because there's almost always a face in tie-dye. So I hope you will um, try this technique at home and give it a shot for one of your upcoming costumes. It's a really interesting technique. It's very organic. I could see it embellished with flowers or crystals or, you know, whatever, um, even just plain, like it would just make a really stunning costume if you added some solid mesh or 
um, skin colored mesh in between. I think it could make some really interesting costumes. So give it a try.